Welcome back to the channel. Got something a little bit different for you guys today. So we are doing a three-way versus with these three Sportsters here behind me. We have the Sportster 48, the Nightster, and the Iron 883. Yes, I realize there's one missing. So there's two reasons for that. The main reason the Sportster S is missing from this lineup is because I don't have one here. So I did try to get one, it just wasn't happening. And that made me realize that Tim's Harley-Davidson, the dealership that lets me come in and make these videos, has only had one. Since that Sportster S was released, they've had one bike here. Clearly it's already sold. Getting my hands on another one proved almost impossible, but I decided to go ahead with the video because to me, that bike is in a league of its own. That thing makes significantly more power, is designed so incredibly different, has so many more features that it's not even in the same ballpark as these three. Now that's not saying that bike is good or bad, that's just saying it's in a league of its own. Now I have done a review on the Sportster S model. I did that with the 2021 model. Absolutely nothing has changed for 2022. So I'll put the link to that video in the description if you'd like to learn about that model. However, it won't be in this three-way comparison that we're doing today. Now, before we jump into things, really quickly, I'll throw the specs up on these three bikes just so you can see the horsepower, the torque, the weight and the starting MSRP on all three of these bikes. Now, as you'll see, there is a pretty big difference. I knew there was clearly a best bang for the buck out of these three. We're gonna do the review and I'm gonna leave that up to you guys to decide which one that is. You guys already know the drill if you're familiar with this channel. I'm gonna do a quick walk around so you can see all three of these bikes up close, but also side by side. I have reviewed all of these models individually, but I know for me personally, it really does help to be able to see things side by side when making a comparison. Also, yes, I did choose all three colorways in black just because we happen to have all of these in black here. But speaking to that, I want to point something out. So I don't know if it's just something weird with Harley's website. Obviously, as you can see, we're here alone, so there's no one to ask just to get clarification. But the price I showed you guys was starting MSRP. Now with your Sportster 48, your Nightster, and your 883, all three of these bikes are available in three colorways. The colors that you're looking at now are the cheapest on the 48 and on the Nightster. But when you go to Harley Davidson's website and you change the color on the 883 iron, it does not add to the price. I think both of these other two models, it's gonna add $400 to the price if you change the color to something other than black. So I thought that was odd, but if it's true, it's good news for those interested in the iron 883, get whatever color you want. And I don't think it should add anything extra to the price. Now normally I like to start with the gas tank and kind of give my opinions on the graphic or the badge that Harley chose to go with, but I'm not gonna do that this time. We are gonna talk about the gas tanks for another reason though. Let's talk about fuel capacity. So your 48 comes in last place with 2.1 gallons. Uh, I've defended small gas tanks in the past and I'm gonna defend this one because this is absolutely one of my favorite style tanks. You see it on a lot of different bikes. It's a little peanut tank. Super clean and simple, but you're gonna stop a lot. Let's just put it that way. I mean, 2.1 gallons, if you're riding this thing hard, you'd be lucky to probably get 80 miles out of that. So that's gonna leave a little bit to desired. Your winner in the fuel capacity is the Iron 883 at 3.3 gallons. And that's a good looking tank too. These tanks also very, very popular. Kind of the starting point for a lot of guys builds. They will take these tanks and cut them to fit their bike. So they'll widen them, they'll narrow them. Just kind of give it their own style. Now, the tank on the Nightster is not right here. Your tank is gonna be underneath your seat here. So when you get gas, 
what you're going to do is you're going to pop your key in right here. You're going to lift this seat up and you're going to fill your gas tank up there. The Nightster has a 3.1 gallon tank, which I feel like for a Sportster is fair. But one of the things I like about it being mounted under the seat is it's going to have a little bit lower center of gravity. So you look at something like the 48 with two gallons, that's not really going to add a lot of weight up top to make it top heavy. But when you move up to three gallons, a little bit more weight and having it down below makes that bike just a little bit more nimble, easier to throw around. So let's compare gauges on your Iron 883 and your Sportster 48, which is the bike we're on right now. Same exact gauge. So analog speedo, everything else will be digital, but there's not a whole lot when I say everything else. So you're gonna have your trip meters, trip A and trip B, your clock, your gear and RPM. So it's gonna show you what gear you're in and what your RPMs are. It won't show a gear if the clutch is in or the bike is in neutral. Cycle back through, it shows you your miles. That's literally it. That's it for the gauge. Pretty simple, straightforward, to the point, no frills. Now on your Nightster model, little bit different, kind of a hybrid in that you have your analog speedo, but you've got a little bit more going on here in the digital thing, and that's because the Nightster has ride modes. So you're gonna cycle through, you're gonna get those same options, gonna show you how many miles are on the bike, trip A, trip B, how many miles till empty, your clock, your RPM, and yes, this bike will show you what gear that you're in. As far as the mode, so you'll see we're in sport mode. There's a rain mode, there's also a road mode. So really quickly, I'd like to speak to those modes. I did do a full review on the Nightster as well as doing a test ride where I talked about those. I don't know if the test ride video will be up at the time of this video going up, so we'll touch on those really quickly. Sport mode, if you're an experienced rider, is probably gonna be the mode that you're gonna stay in. I never caught myself taking the Nightster or the Sportster S out of sport mode other than to try the other modes out. It's the most fun, the bike is most lively. If you're experienced, that's probably gonna be the mode for you. Road mode is just a tamed down version of sport mode, a little less throttle, a little less responsive, and unless you're kind of still learning to ride, I don't understand why you would wanna do that. Rain mode, obviously pretty self-explanatory what that one's for, however, I do think this is a really, really good option for a first time rider because the Nightster has almost 90 horsepower, which could be a lot, especially for a new rider. So my recommendation for newer riders, people just moving up from say something like a Rebel 500 or a smaller bike, put this thing in rain mode, get used to it, switch up to road mode, and then eventually you'll get to enjoy sport mode. And I think you'll be pretty happy with the results once you do that. So the Sportster S, like we said, it's not here. And I was gonna try not to bring it up since it's not here. However, I do wanna point out the gauge. I'll throw it up on the screen real quick so you can see it. That gauge is, is by far my favorite gauge that Harley Davidson has done. It offers the most options as well as being able to hook the gauge to your phone and mirror your GPS onto that display. That's a really nice feature. So then you don't have to run your cell phone on your handlebars if you don't want to, which to me is something that I would eventually like to see on all Harley Davidson models if they can keep the price in check when doing so. Let's talk a little bit about riding position. Now, to me, these two, the 883 and the Nightster are very, very similar. And it's kind of easy to see in that they are a similar seat height, very similar bar, and then they both have mid controls on them. Your 48, very similar bar as well, but you're gonna see that this one comes standard with forward controls. Now, if we're talking completely stock bikes, although I love the look of the 48, the handling feels a little weird to me personally because your arms are not that far outstretched, but your legs are. And it's almost the opposite on the Nightster, whereas your legs are not that stretched out, but your arms are. So to me, for that upright riding position that I prefer, I think the Iron 883 pretty much nails that for me. Now, this is a very subjective thing. Everybody likes some, something a little bit different. 
So you're going to have to decide what's for you. But for me personally, as far as riding position out of the box, I really like what the 883 has to offer. So another reason I love the 48 is that big beefy front end, that big fat front tire. Now you'll notice the Iron 883 and the Nightster both have 19 inch wheels and the tire size is a 100. So you'll see they're not skinny, but they're a lot skinnier than the 130 that's on the front of the 48. You'll also notice the front forks are significantly thicker on this bike. Now it doesn't really change the handling, but it does a lot for the cosmetics. Your Nightster and your 883 gonna have the same diameter forks, a little bit different look because you've got the rubber boot on the 883. And while we're up here on the front ends, real quick, we'll point out all three are single-sided disc brakes. All three are running Brembo brakes. However, one thing that I found interesting that Harley did on the Nightster was they're now branding the brakes with Brembo, whereas before they would do this. So it's still a Brembo brake, it's just branded with the Harley Davidson logo. And while we are talking front brakes, I wanna show you. So one thing the Sportster S has, the Pan America has, it's just a little bit different, and the Nightster, this clear reservoir for your brake fluid. I don't know why, but I really like that. To me, it just seems kind of trick. But what I was wanting to show you is this. So your clutch and your brake lever on the Nightster are gonna be adjustable. So all you do is turn it down to a lower number if you want the lever to be closer to you. If you wanna move it away, you just turn it a few clicks. You can see we've increased the reach for your fingers. I really like that as an option because you have all different size people riding Sportsters, whereas your 883, and your Sportster 48 are not gonna give you that adjustability. Something that seems like a small detail but makes a huge difference are mirrors. There's gonna be three different mirror setups on these three bikes. So your 883 is running a very conventional style mirror upright. Your Nightster has these clip-ons, meaning they clip on to the end of the bars. Kinda of let you see from behind the bike what that looks like. We'll show you the 883 as well. Sportster 48 does it a little bit different. Now I've done this on street glides that I've had in the past where when you put a taller bar, you can't use the factory mirrors for the street glide, your hands end up being in the way. That worked on that bike because the handlebars were tall. But for me at 5'11 and 205 pounds, I'm a little bit bigger of a guy. I can't see anything out of these mirrors. I can basically see my shoulders and that's about it unless I lean kind of out of the way and then look in the mirror when I'm passing. So as far as mirrors go, I'm gonna have to give it to the Nightster. I do know they stick out a little bit. It looks a little bit funny, but they are very, very functional. And to me, it doesn't look any worse than those. Lighting on the front of these bikes. So your 883 and your iron, exact same headlight, same one Harley's been doing for a long time. Nice, clean, and simple, but your Nightster, we finally have LED headlights on a Sportster. I am a big fan of lighting. I'm a big fan of the way this light looks. So I feel like they did a great job with this, as well as the cowl. It does do something, but don't take it to be like a fairing where you're just not gonna feel the wind. Your Iron 883, I don't even know what you would call this, if you would still call this a cowl. Basically, it's just a little cover for the headlight. Whereas your 48 stripped down, kind of a, a bobber looking bike. So it's gonna be just your headlight. So from the factory, all three bikes are set up for solo, meaning there's no two up seat and there is no passenger pegs. You can add a passenger pillion or a two up seat as well as foot pegs on all three of these bikes. Shocks, all three of these have adjustable rear shocks. Your Sportster 48 and Iron 883 same exact shock, same adjustability. You're gonna get a wrench with it. Just loosen this lock nut. Read in your owner's manual, it will tell you which one of these little spots to put your suspension settings on based on your weight. Your Nightster, same thing, just a little bit different look. So this one has a rubber boot over it and you do get the wrench underneath the seat. 
Same as the other models, but this is a different shock and a different spring. So exhaust, your 883 and 48 will have two into two, meaning two pipes that go into the motor and two pipes that come out. Your Nitzer is gonna be two into one. So two pipes coming out of the engine, which funnel down into one pipe. I said in my review of this bike that I like this and I like that Harley was moving to a two into one system, at least on this particular model. Yeah, it is a little bit beefier than your standard two into one exhaust system, but I thought it looked pretty good. People were leaving comments saying they absolutely hated it. One thing that I like about it is it's big enough to hide that swing arm, which is absolutely nothing special. Now I know when we talk exhaust, you guys want to hear exhaust notes. It's really hard to translate on video. Also stock Harley Davidson's are extremely quiet but I'll fire these bikes up just so you can get a little taste. So the 48 that we're using to do the review actually has a dead battery. So I'm gonna start this one up, which also made me realize there's something else I could point out because this has been asked before on my review of the 48. It's gonna be this, security on this bike. So if your bike has security, which is not an alarm per se, your lights flash if someone moves your bike, but what's good about this is you do not need that key to start this bike. As long as that key fob is within range, you're just gonna hit your on switch, let your fuel pump run, hit start. Then just hit the kill switch again as you'll see, the bike is cut off and security is now set. Non-security models are gonna have this little ignition here. Just turn your ignition, no big deal. It's just nice not to have to do that one extra step. So back to exhaust notes. We're gonna start this Nightster up here. Now, I know what a lot of people are thinking and what a lot of you have probably already commented. That does not sound like a Harley. No, it doesn't. Not the Harleys, not the Sportsters that you're familiar with. However, I think after this year, that will be the new sound of the Sportster. So love it, hate it, or indifferent, that's going to be what you get. I know some companies are starting to roll out some exhaust. They also rolled out some for the Pan America which do make these Revolution Max engines a little bit more throaty, but it's never going to sound like that conventional Harley Davidson sound. You're gonna have to let that go at some point. I myself struggle with it, but this is the way of the future. Now I'm not gonna bother starting the Iron 883 because although it is a smaller displacement engine, it sounds absolutely identical to the 48 when they are both stock. So because of emissions, which is why I think the conventional sportsters are going away, period, Harley has to send these things out basically pretty choked down and a very mellow exhaust. So if you wanna say that real Harley Davidson sound, I mean, from the factory, none of these bikes, I mean, here's a Lowrider S, here's a Street Glide ST. I mean, these are performance bikes with 117s. They don't sound like a Harley, actually. There you go. That's one of the most performance-based Harley-Davidson's out right now with the biggest factory displacement Harley-Davidson offers, and that's what it sounds like. So if you want to say, oh, it doesn't sound like a Harley, I get it, but neither do the other models in my opinion. So we've already talked about the front tire sizes on this bike. All three of the rears are going to be a 150, 80, 16. However, your Sportster 48 and your Iron 883 are gonna have Michelins from the factory, whereas your Nightster is gonna have a Dunlop. Now, to be completely honest, I've never really loved the factory Harley tires. They're not bad by any means, and I've gotten a ton of life out of them. However, for me personally, up in the mountains, up in the curves, they leave a little bit to be desired. I don't fully feel like I could trust them. I haven't been able to push that Dunlop 
to the point of really testing it. Hopefully it's a little bit better. The rear of these things is gonna be pretty much identical, whereas your turn signals and tail lights are built in to one housing. Your license plate will be off to the left. And not to keep bringing up the Sportster S, but I will say I do like the setup on these significantly more than that piece that they put on the back of the Sportster S. We'll throw it up right now so you can see what I'm talking about. And some people really, really like that design. I personally felt like Harley made it easy to remove because they knew a lot of us were going to take that thing off of there. Now let's get into the power plants of these machines. The 883 and the 48, you're going to have your Evo motor, whereas the Nightster has the new Revolution Max motor, which if you recall from the specs I threw up at the beginning of the video, significantly more power in that machine. Now, torque wise, I think the 48 does squeak it out by about three foot pounds. And that's one thing that gets tricky when you're looking up these numbers on these bikes is to be sure you're comparing them evenly because I found one of the stats for the Nightster that was a different measurement that has torque listed at 95. But when you're talking foot pounds, what I found said it was at 70, 48 was at 73, so your 48 is going to barely squeak by torque wise, whereas your 883 is at 53. Now, horsepower wise, this Nightster blows these other two out of the water at 89 horsepower. Your 48 is 67, and your Iron 883 is 49. Now, that said, I would be doing you guys a huge disservice if I didn't point out the fact that your Nightster is going to be the only one out of the three that has a six speed transmission. For those of you that don't know why that may be important or why that may be a benefit, when you're doing longer stretches of highway, clearly fifth gear on those other two models is fine, but the RPMs are gonna be a little bit higher. It's not gonna be quite as comfortable. So consider the sixth gear on the Nightster kind of like an overdrive in your car. When you're cruising down the interstate and it hits that final gear, the RPMs drop a little bit. It's just a little bit more comfortable of a ride. Same thing with that Nightster. So I'm glad to see that Harley went to that six speed transmission for the new Sportsters. Most of you know this already, but for those that don't, the Revolution Max is the only one out of the three that is liquid cooled. Most people are torn on that. I feel like the older generation didn't want liquid cooling. The newer generation ain't gonna buy anything that's not liquid cooled. So I think it was a good move for Harley to do liquid cooling on the new Sportsters. Also, this Revolution Max, the way it's designed, it is a liquid cooled engine. All the new Sportsters will have that Revolution Max engine. Therefore, they will all be water cooled. The Pan America, which we happen to have one right over here. Same thing, it's running the 1250 Revolution Max, not that 975 also liquid cooled. All right, time for my final thoughts on these three. I can appreciate all three bikes for what they are, but for my money, if I had to choose one of these three, I'm going with the 48. That's because I'm a little bit more old school. I love the look of this bike out of the box, but with my time in the dealerships, I've been able to see a lot of really cool 48s come through here. People running mini apes, people doing all kinds of stuff to those bikes. I like the look, I like the sound, and I'm willing to spend a little bit of money to bump the performance to get it a little bit closer to the Nightster. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos that featured the Nightster, you'll know I don't dislike it. I think it's a great bike. I like the styling. I think Harley was smart to make it look a little more like the conventional Sportsters than say the Sportster S. I love the numbers that it puts out. I love the ride modes. However, I do not love the touch points on this bike that are plastic. I've heard it argued it's to save weight. I don't care for 13.5, which is where this bike starts. I feel like that is a very premium price tag on a Sportster and I want premium materials to match it. That's gonna do it for this one, guys. If you have any questions that weren't answered in this video, I do try to respond to almost every comment. So leave a comment and if I don't get to it, usually someone else that knows will be able to answer your questions. If you made it this far in the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.